What's good, Shell Tron here? You can call me Shells, and I'm back, back, back at again with a brand new video. And I'm gonna keep it a bow, Bray Biscuit. Carolina Panthers football is officially back. As we all know, training camp has officially started for the NFL, and the Panthers are doing something very different. They're doing something this year that we haven't seen happen before. They are doing live streams of the training camp practice sessions, not the whole practice, but for the first 45 minutes to an hour of each practice, we get to see both the offense and the defense work out. We have our new team reporter, Kristen Balboni, and she's been doing these with Jake DeLome. And over the past couple of days, we've had other guys come through. We had Roman Harper come through. We had Moose come through as well. And we've been allowed to get a small glimpse at what the team is looking at, improving on, and working on during this offseason. And as we know, this has been a very awkward offseason, a very different offseason. With coronavirus going on, we weren't able to get any real OTAs, mini camps, guys weren't allowed to even meet in person. So right now we're getting a very short, abbreviated training camp session. There are no preseason games. And as we know, we've had guys who've made the team off of preseason performances. Namely, the most recently is probably Reggie Bondafun. But this year, we're not going to get that. We have to evaluate players based off their training camp performance. And that is very hard because you do not get to see how guys will look in an actual game setting. Now, obviously, preseason games aren't all that serious. They don't really tell you a whole lot, but you can get a lot more about a player and his abilities, his awareness, and what he will do in situations than you can out of training camp sessions where you're not really hitting dudes hard. You will have to use pads and you will start hitting eventually, but you're not really going at it like you would in a game setting and your teammates and stuff. So you're not really going all that hard. It's a very different setting between training camp and even as soft as preseason games go. But we got to work with what we got to work with. And what we have to work with right now is 45 minutes to an hour each day of training camp sessions. So right now, I'm going to go over the first two days of training camp, meaning Monday and Tuesday. The team had Wednesday off. And a little bit later today, I will go over what happened today on Thursday. And I got to tell you right now, I am very, very impressed with what I've seen from the Panthers organization over the first couple of days of training camp, we see Jake DeLome in his truck outside his house in Louisiana. I don't know what's going on inside Jake DeLome's house right now. Maybe it's loud. Maybe it's under construction. Maybe the horses got inside there. I don't know. He likes doing these live stream sessions outside in his truck. So, hey, whatever he likes to do, do what you got to do. It is kind of weird because sometimes his audio gets a little messed up. Sometimes it gets a little laggy on his end. But if that's what he wants to do. I'm not going to disrespect the GOAT of all time. The GOAT oat. You feel me? So that's what we have to work with. Jake DeLome does provide a lot of insight on training camp drills, on what coaches are looking for, what players should be doing. He doesn't just know about offense. He's also very aware of what the defense is looking for. And he even says that his favorite part of training camp is watching the defense, watching the D-line and the DBs work and do what they have to do, which I think makes sense since as a quarterback, your biggest concern are those D-linemen and those DBs basically pressure coming to you and the guys who are defending the targets of your passes. That makes a lot of sense coming from him. And I'm gonna keep it real, on the very first day of practice with pads, we didn't see all that much. For the most part, we saw very basic drills. We saw the running backs going through their cuts. We saw some basic things with the uh, with the D-line and whatnot and getting off of blocks and all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing we heard from Coach Rev Rule was that this week is about finding a physical identity of the team and what is expected of these players. And that is a huge thing because for this defense, we need to find an identity. The offense is pretty all right. There are still some questions about the O-line. Greg Little is back and practicing, but I don't know exactly what we're looking at there with him. Okun, I'm not sure what's going to happen with him. Who's playing left tackle? Who's playing guard? I'm not exactly 100% sure about that just yet. But, I mean, the skill positions, we know what we have there, right? We have DJ, Curtis, Robbie. We have Ian Thomas. We have Omar Bayless, who really showed up big. Omar Bayless is a sleeper, sleeper, sleeper. I think will have a really great chance to make the team. I think it also depends on how many tight ends we decide to carry into the season. We can't have three tight ends and a fullback and have 
six or seven receivers. It depends on what we do with uh, Tommy Lee Lewis, who we just signed off a video about that coming up very soon. We also have Farrell Cooper, and he looks pretty good as well. We have to figure out exactly what we're doing with the receiver core. I mean, we have a lot of things that look really good, but the identity of the offense will always, always come down to how does your quarterback look? And we have to see how Teddy Bridgewater looks in a game setting. I know he can pitch and catch in the practice field. I know he can do things really well on the practice field. We need to see how he looks behind this O-line going up against defenders who do not care whether he's hurt or not. Or do not care whether or not they hurt him. So we have to see about that coming up in the actual regular season. But what I liked the most was two things in this first day of practice. One, Matt Rule is not just a coach. He doesn't just tell you how to do things. He actually goes through the drills as well. There was a rip drill the D-line and linebackers were going through where you're going through the pads. You rip to one side, go to the opposite side. You do that four times, and there's another dummy who you tackle. Most guys are pushing the tackling dummy down. Rev Rule was going through this drill at 110 miles an hour. He was giving that effort. Now, look, I'm not sure if he was telling the guys, hey, I want you to put in this amount of effort on every single rep. Or he was giving the guys an example of how the team looked tackling last year. Because, look, he was putting in that effort, but it was ugly. I ain't going to lie to you. It did not look pretty. He is not a coach who just leads with his mouth and his words. He leads with that action. And that's exactly the kind of thing you want to do when you're a new coach coming into a very weird situation with coronavirus and not really having a real off season. You have one month of actual physical practice before the regular season starts. You want to set that tone and let your players know it's not just you out there in the trenches. I'm out here too. I'm with you. So if I'm putting in this work, I know you can put in that work too. But that wasn't even the biggest thing because the team made sure we got a little something. The Panthers engaged in a little bit of fan service. And at the very end of the practice session that was allowed for the team to be streamed, they had one-on-one -on -one drills between the DBs and the receivers. You couldn't always see which quarterback was throwing the pass. Sometimes it was obviously Teddy. Sometimes it was Will Greer. Sometimes it was PJ. And what I saw from PJ was actually really impressive as well. But basically what we saw was some things we expected and some other things we did not expect. Like I mentioned earlier, Omar Bayless looked impressive. I don't think I saw him miss a pass. The dude was catching balls on short routes. He was getting open in the back of the end zone. He was making contested passes. And the biggest thing about what was happening in these drills was that there was a lot of contact between the receivers and the DBs. And you know what? I actually like that because I think you should always practice under tougher conditions than you play. So with all that contact, if you're a receiver who can catch through contact, all that practice of catching through hand fighting will make catching through lesser contact even easier for you. And we saw a lot of guys shine. Like I mentioned, Omar Bayless looked very impressive. I like what I saw out of Farrell Cooper. I like what I saw out of even Brandon Zilstra. Brandon Zilstra is a big dude. I'm not so sure just how safe his roster spot is if he makes the team. We have a lot of targets on this team, and I don't think he can really return kicks and punts. And I think whoever is the fifth or sixth guy in the roster has to be able to also return kicks and punts. And this is how it works out. But he looks impressive. I'm not going to lie to you. The man looks impressive. But what I noticed... What I saw that I think I 100% expected, honestly, was Dante Jackson. As usual, I saw him get cooked consistently by DJ Moore and other receivers on our team. Hand fighting, a lot of contact. He gets his ankles broke off by DJ Moore. And look, I understand DJ puts up numbers. DJ is very talented. DJ is a good receiver. But I don't know if you should be getting your ankles broke off, falling to the ground. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to boost it or nothing. It was not very impressive, especially in the year right now where there are questions about our CUB1 position. Will it be TJ Green? Will it be Eli Apple? My opinion on the matter, I'll bring that up a little bit later in a different video probably. But in general... I don't think it really matters who the CB1 is. We are, we are playing against some of the best receivers in the whole league. No one is stopping them. There's no James Bradbury this year. I'll get deeper into my thoughts about that a little bit later on. But when there's so many questions about CB1, we need to have something going on at CB2. And what I'm seeing so far is not very encouraging out of Dante Jackson. It could get better, but 
we'll have to see how things work out. He's been working with uh, Ryan Clark in the summer, so we might see some really good progression from him. I am hoping for that. I do not wish on this man's downfall. I want him to prove me wrong. Him proving me wrong is proving the team right and drafting him, and I'd rather be wrong 100 times out of 100 than for the team and Marty Herney to be proven wrong and picking up a player who just hasn't worked out, as has been the case with a lot of other DBs in the past. We can move on from that. But in day two, basically what we saw was not very much. We didn't really get all that much of uh, highlights or very interesting things from the actual play on the field, from the players on the team. Uh, we got some really good talks from Jake DeLome and Roman Harper talking about the team and how drills work and their philosophy, talking about these th things, what you're looking for in these drills. They had a lot of really good points. But for the most part, what we saw was defensive drills and guys working on creating turnovers. There was at least a strong 15, 20 minutes of stream time dedicated to watching these defensive players punch out the ball from uh, the runner's hands and punching out a ball from a dummy, all this other kind of stuff, making sure we're trying to create turnovers, give our offense more opportunities because elongated, extended drives for opponents' offenses will not win us games. And look, we have a lot of guys who are young who are going to progress and grow in this season, but I don't expect greatness right now. They're going to be growing into next season, and in two years, this is going to be a, a kind of a rebuild situation where guys are going to be moving forward, actual real productive members on the team, and we'll have a actually good defense moving forward. But right now, I think we all understand and acknowledge that the talent is on offense. So if you want to win, you got to do it by outscoring the other team rather than stopping the other team from scoring. It's going to be hard to do that. So I think creating turnovers is our best bet. And then we saw uh, just basic talk about the DBs winning over receivers. I wish I could have saw a little bit more of the one-on-ones between DBs and receivers, but we didn't really get that in day two. But overall, we saw some very interesting things, and we saw that we're going to have some talent on this team that we did not expect, and there's going to be some guys who need to step up. But I think I feel really good about the team moving forward. Maybe not this season, but we have so many young guys and so many guys on the roster who are going to have good, solid years this year and even better years and years to come. Makes me excited for the future of the team, man. That's how I feel about it. I'll leave links to both of the live streams in the description below. Uh, let me know all your thoughts, what you thought of all the practices, the drills, all that kind of stuff. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And you already know to do with that like button. Cheers to you. Appreciate the chance. Being told y'all I've been the man. Being told y'all I had the gift. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Real ones gonna recommend. Count this as another win. 